All right, <clears throat> this is a spreadsheet. It's, it's an Excel, a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet that calculates uh, the cost of fresh air makeup into a rooftop air conditioner. So it, it uses many different values. Um, you can see my pen here that you know, we've got bin data here. And we've got uh, design hours, mass f design hours. Then we got the enthalpy, en enthalpy, enthalpy of the outside air, the en empathy of the design inside air, and then the delta T between those two. And so we've got a lot of figures here that uh, can calculate the dollar amount here of of the savings. <clears throat> so for this particular spreadsheet, we've got. Um, some default values and you can see right here this is the CFM that you're going to increase or decrease 24,000 CFM um, and then you've got cost per kilowatt hour and you are cost per ton of the air conditioner how efficient it is and then you get cost per kilowatt hour and it does a calculation down here so this particular example at 24,000 CFM at the conditions over here will save $12,500 a year or just a little over $1,000 a month. <clears throat> That's the air conditioning mode. Now let's take a look at this spreadsheet as a whole. You know, it's a pretty large spreadsheet. Here's it's zoomed out uh, so you can see everything that's involved, but you can't read it very well. But we were over in this section over here uh, looking at cost savings. Down below here, once you get into this section, Back down here you're into heating savings so uh, we're going to go over some of that but I just wanted to give you an idea of how large it was uh, over here is the formulas that uh, actually calculate uh, how it shows how it calculates um, we'll look at these a little further but there are nine different formulas that go down and they actually go across like this this multiplied by this equals this Set next one, this multiplied by this, or this divided by this equals this, until you get down here to these bottom ones, which on the heating side calculates uh, total savings of heating. And then over here, this one calculates total heating of, of uh, <clears throat> cooling, or total energy savings of cooling. Now down at the bottom here, there's variables. Let's, let's zoom in on that, just for the heck of it. You can take a look at some of these other things too. So here we've got variables and we've also got uh, here the formulas that I talked about. You can see them a little bit better now. But these variables, you can change this. Here's 24,000 CFM and as soon as you put a different value in there, it actually changes all these values right here. And even with this enthalpy, as soon as you change your temperature and humidity values down here, it calculates an empathy and puts it in this column here. So, and then you've also got uh, uh, a bunch of other values that you can change. Here's the kil kilowatt hours per ton of cooling, the kilowatt, uh, the, the dollars per kilowatt charged by the energy company, or cents, six cents on the dollar. And then here you've got uh, therms, what it costs for a therm of natural gas, heating efficiency of the heater, and then uh, this is a temp that we'll talk about a little later. This is the temp where, uh, where you start to uh, use natural gas, start to use heating. So <clears throat> that's a little bit more. Um, you'll also notice that there's some blank spots here. Uh, right here, some zeros, right here, some zeros. If we follow this back, uh, this is the bin data for minus 25, minus 20 to minus 25 minus 30 to minus 25, uh, <clears throat> right there, Iowa, uh, and we're basing this on Des Moines, Iowa, they don't have any bin data because they never get that low. So it's zeroed out. Uh, other cities do, like Minneapolis or Alaska. And the same is up here. You can see that uh, there isn't any design hours for bin data. Again, this is uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Um, we've got 000 on 100 through 105, and uh, the first one is 95 through 100. There are 18 hours per year that it's uh, at at 
uh, that type of design condition. So, you know, this, this, this uh, spreadsheet is locked to a degree. And that, and that all this information out in here is locked, although it can be changed, and I'll show you how. But, um, but you can't go in here and click on any of these uh, cells and do anything. Um, the, the only thing that can be changed, it says right here, change the variables at the bottom of the spreadsheet to ch change the result calculations. So if we slide down here to the bottom, here are the variables, and here are the only things that can be changed. If you click on these, um, you can put in a different value with your keyboard. So all of these. So, uh, and then these guys down here, and then over here, these guys right here. Now, if you take your, your pointer, I, I'm actually using a tablet with a pointer. Oh, I can bring, there's the keyboard I can bring up, but I can't select any of these other cells because they're all locked. So that kind of keeps people from screwing up this, uh, this uh, spreadsheet. And if you ever wanted the, the password, uh, email me and I'll give it to you because then you know what you're doing, apparently. So... Let's go down here one more time, you know, and take a look at these these red, uh, the formulas. So you can see here that we've got this subtract this equals this. You know that that actually this right here is this column here. Subtract this column here equals this column here. So all of those follow that pattern. Go to to this one. This column here. Divide by this column here equals this column here. So it, it goes back and forth between heating and cooling also. You can see that this yellow dividing line here actually is just stating, you know, here's cooling savings, here's heating savings. That's all that yellow divider is doing. So we go back to uh, looking at, at these. I guess I explained how this works. And so each one of these formulas goes further and further within the spreadsheet to come up with the final calculations. And then these are the variables that you can actually plug in, and you will get different outputs as far as dollars saved or dollars spent. So let's try one of these. There's a calculator. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put this 4 back in here. So, I mean, just to give you an idea, we'll slide over here. And you can see that, as far as cooling is concerned, we're uh, saving $12,000 a month at 24,000 CFM. So, if we change this uh, 24,000 CFM, we'll go in here and we'll backspace a couple and we'll change, change this to you know, 36,000. CFM. Uh, if you go over here and take a look at it, there, changed it. I didn't hit enter. You go take a look at it. We've gone up to a savings of fifteen hundred dollars a month, eighteen thousand plus total. So it it changed it. You know, up 50%. Well, we increased the CFM of 50%, so that makes sense. Then the same is true with all these other values. I mean, we've got this uh, uh, cost of the air conditioning uh, per ton of cooling. And this one I've got at $1.2 per ton is what it cost. That ranges, uh, air conditioners range from just under $1 a ton to maybe $1.5 a ton. So that can be changed and it's significantly going to change this dollar value depending on how efficient your uh, air conditioner is. The cost per kilowatt uh, charged by the utility. Right here it's, it's six cents per kW. You know there are parts in the United States where it's 15 cents a kW. It's not much lower than five cents a kW. I, Iowa is pretty cheap uh, electricity but that has a significant 
uh, impact on these dollar amounts. But, you know, the key here, though, is the CFM, um, that you, uh, you take a look at it. You can change these other values here a little bit. And you can see your dollar amount saved. Cooling, and then down here, heating. Now, one of the other things that this calculator does on the heating side um, is uh, take into account when you may um, start going into heating mode. Sometimes the load is great enough uh, within the facility uh, that you're in free cooling for a long time. So you're, you're taking advantage of that cold air outside, dumping into the building and actually cooling off the building. So that varies. Um, so over here in this column, as you go down here, you can see that we've got this 35 degrees. And this says, enter the temperature when the heating season begins. Let's say it's 35 degrees. So what that's done is put zeros here and then a bunch of ones. And those zeros here come out uh, so they're not added on to this total. So let's change this once. Let's uh, let's make this, well, it went into 5 degrees. Let's do 5 degrees. You can see that uh, a lot more zeros came in here, and the savings uh, is a lot less. This all, this area in here is where you're getting free cooling, uh, and you're utilizing that cold air. Here's where the heating season starts, where you start to use natural gas uh, for heating. And then here's where the energy savings calculations uh, come into play. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, you scroll back up here, you can see that as you hover over some of these uh, totals, you do get uh, a little helper about what it means. And see as I hover over these. So you can read those, get a little bit better understanding of what's going on there. Um, you know, the difficult ones uh, are this mass flow here, uh, enthalpy and a delta enthalpy. You know, enthalpy is just the heat per pound. So air has a weight, uh, air weighs something, and a pound of air has an enthalpy of this. Uh, and it has uh, certain values that you can use uh, to calculate uh, how much uh, heating or cooling is needed. It's not, no, it's not a great explanation, but you can read these. And that's where this 4.5 comes in. This is really what's called a constant. Uh, it's, it's mass flow of the air. And so this constant is what does a lot of the calculations to come up with total BTUs, total tons, and et cetera. So... Uh, that's that. So to conclude, um, we'll shrink it back down here again. You know, this, this spreadsheet, there it is as a whole, um, all it does, like it says up here, is it's an energy calculator, rooftop AC makeup, increase or decrease of CFM. All it is is a calculator to calculate your losses or gains uh, of makeup air, fresh air coming into your air conditioners to fresh air coming into your building, what it costs you to have that air come into your building. So that's that's what it is, and uh, that's, that's, that's it for now. Thank you very much. Goodbye. You know, I know I said goodbye, but there's, there's another thing I could talk about, and that is, you know, the overall um, accuracy of this calculator. How accurate are these numbers? How accurate are the calculations? Well, you know, the calculations and the values come up with some very accurate results, but it's the values that put in, are they, how true are they? And for an example, CFM here, here, this is CFM, right there of, of uh, 24,000, oh, that one's 36,000 CFM. How do you know exactly what your uh, fresh air coming to your building is? I mean, you can talk to your uh, your H HVAC tech and say, yeah, we got 24,000 CFM. 
cut it down to 12,000 CFM. That's a very difficult thing to do to know that you're back down to 12%, 12,000 CFM. That can vary 15, 20%. Um, and, and then it's the, the, the actual linkage within the damper itself that is hard to keep uh, accurate. I mean, it's, that, that right there is just not a very accurate uh, uh, measurement. So, you know, the, these values here, again, are just approximations to give you a good idea of what you might save if you cut down your CFM. Um, you know, and the other value right here is kW per ton. It costs you to cool your air conditioner. Um, you know, that, that relates back to an EER energy efficiency ratio or an SEER uh, energy efficiency ratio. Uh, and how accurate is that? Um, they, they state that, but as air conditioners get whole, old, condensers get dirty, uh, equipment gets old, you know, that can change. Um, so that's another value that you know, makes this total calculation uh, an approximation. So on the heating side, you know, the efficiency of your furnace can vary a little bit. I've got 0.75 in here as far as the efficiency of the furnace. It might be 8.0 or 8.5, they might state, but then part load efficiencies have an effect, or part load operations, excuse me, have an effect on efficiency. So this number can actually vary a, a bit. So that's just a couple examples that make this more of an approximation rather than a very you know, tightly calculated value. So that's all I wanted to state for uh, closing. That'll do it. Thank you very much. Bye.